WFIU, Bloomington, Indiana, where you don't need to be an expert if you learn something new every day. News at the top of the hour. I'm Carrie O'Nanon. And I'm Dan V. Press. In a growing effort to take our mind off world events, we here in the newsroom have decided to replace the trending news bites, typical of our daily routine, with something that has been lost in recent years due to the demise of that great American institution, the newspaper. Yes, that's right, Gary. I know. Mm -hmm. And with last July's breaking news of the discovery of thousands of hours of sound recordings, on the side of the box is written 1935 to 1942, the Hoosier Vagabond and that girl who rides with him from one of the all-time great reporters of the art form and Indiana's favorite son. You're in for a treat today. I'm Carrie O'Nanon, and with the story is the omniscient Dan V. Prescott. It's Prescott. Thank you, Carrie. On and on. I'm Carrie O'Nanon. And on. I am. Well, folks, you are in for a treat today because you will be the first to hear the story from the source himself. Where this wandering business will get us or where it'll end, I have no idea. My boss in Washington got tired of my pestering about the travel idea, so he said, oh, all right, go on, get out, try it a little while as an experiment, we'll see how it turns out. From that day on, he never mentioned it again. That is the voice of famed World War II correspondent and newspaper columnist Ernie Pyle. Only one recording of Ernie Pyle's voice was known to exist till late last year when that grand treasure trove of wire spools was found. For those out of the know, before the war, Pyle and his wife traveled the United States and parts abroad, gathering stories to be used in a newspaper column for the Scripps Howard News Service. The task amounted to 1,000 words a day, six days a week. And now, thanks to these recordings, we know what that sounds like. I can go on about it, but heck, I ought to just stop talking right here and let old Ernie get to it himself. Hello, this is Ernie Pyle, the Hoosier Vagabond, and this is that girl who rides with me. Here we are. Welcome to the Ernie Pyle Experiment, Episode 1, The Bourgeois Standard. Imagine, if you will, early June of 1936, a hotel room in northwest Iowa. Ernie and his wife, Jerry, seem to be wrestling with the task of recording themselves. Oh. All right, then. Mr. RCA... Better acquainted. You and your fancy knobs and your chrome grill. Anyway, this whole thing lacks perspective. No, sir, we still aren't completely on board with this, by the way. Not by a long it's shot. I not know you like kept it on... was a request. Well, did they give Haywood Brune one of these wire voice boxes to lug with him wherever he goes? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Anyway, I have a chip on my shoulder, so you know. But listen, we have taken it out some. You don't have to believe me. But... Oh, just because you say something doesn't mean it magically comes true. But when you make a promise about something... You some... shouldn't lie. You calling me a liar? Not yet. Not yet. What am I about to lie about, then? Oh, you've been using the recorder on people. I have used it. They gave us that thing well over a year ago. You, you haven't even changed the wire yet. I have. Look, they last a long time. What is that? It's <laughs> 24, 28-gauge even... wire. One of these spools lasts for an hour. You're not even halfway through yet. Yeah, yeah, look. It's maybe three-quarters of the way through. Oh, well, haven't you been busy? Well, there's a lot more in there. Look, we're headed home, so back back at the office, they're going to want to hear some stuff. I promised I'd use the cursed thing, so we're going to open it up a bit more in the coming days. And Fine, fine, but really what's on there is you complaining anyway. It's all the more reason to fill up these spools so I won't get yelled at. So, 
What I'm trying to get around to saying is to explain that what we just recorded yesterday, it's, it's well, you what's just on before this, this wire. this before that. This before what? Before what's on there yesterday. Well, how do you do that? Oh, do it first, I guess. Well, I'm here now. Well, something to think about. That's all. Just think about it. Anyway, yesterday, somewhere we picked up a traveler. He was headed to some place. He had to get there quick, and uh, he had a little guitar. We ready? No, w- uh, wait a minute. Okay. Jerry, come on. He's going right, to sing another song. Hold on. I'll turn off the engine. Okay. Hurry up. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. <laughs> Let's tune it up. Okay, do your thing. If I'm out of tune, what do you want for nothing? <laughs> no, but thank you for the lift. I should, you I bet. should, I should say I appreciate. Well, it. you I, bet. Well, it depends on how well this song goes. So. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's see what. This is I a like. good one. This one's filled with drama. <laughs> it's filled with drama and and historical accuracy. Oh boy. Okay. You ready? All right. Sure. This is as a true story now. Ever. I heard this one with my own eyes. Now. The CCC, you might agree, puts men back to work by federal decree, making roads and parks and trails and dams. Now Roosevelt's more popular than Abraham. Lincoln, that's Abe Lincoln. Now come on, keep up now. Oh, sure. We're Feels good for folks to be busy as Bumblebee. Yes, it does. Well, the Forestry Division, they came to town with two flatbeds full of pine trees. They started looking around. Mm-hmm. We can plant them here, we can plant them there. Without looking for a spot that was bare, they opted for the courthouse square and cleared the ground. All right. Yeah, they cut them down. The old trees that were there, they turned to stumps. No. Moved all of them out and over to the dump. So they planted them here and they planted them there in the same old holes the old trees shared. It's just as wrong as putting lipstick on your rump. Here, I'll say it again. It's just as wrong as putting lipstick on your rump. It's probably probably slippery, too. (laughs) Well, I like new bridges, roads, curbs, and ditches. I'm fine with our tax dollars iron out the glitches. Me, too. But who the heck is in charge of hiring that guy? It gives the heave-ho to a bunch of fine, fully grown shade trees that were already there doing the job they were tasked with a full mm-hmm. 70 years ago hmm? when they were planted. Was that? Yeah. That, that the too? idea is, yeah, the idea is you can legislate a WPA, right? Right. Right? right? But you can't legislate a common sense administration? A CSA? <laughs> Last CSA yeah, didn't do that, too well. No, that did no, not. That's true. <laughs> yeah. For this administration, though, we need three new letters. So, okay, okay what's another word for common? Bourgeois. Bourgeois, that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. And another word for sense? Well, sense is sense. It's the standard bearer of its own meaning. It, Ooh, it clarifies yeah, itself. Ooh, she's on a period. She's on a roll. Well, she, let's see. In this case, well, the word standard is itself could be yeah. kind of a sideways glance. Uh, definition of bourgeois yeah. itself. There's the right over here. She is, uh, Shh! Bourgeois standard is the shared a definition. We've been down to some two parts. Bourgeois standard, the standard being sensibility, and then you have the same meaning. Common sense. So, yes, bourgeois standard. Wow. Bourgeois standard. I like that. Bourgeois standard. I like it, too. The BS administration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. BS administration. Okay. Now, common sense is common sense, though some ignore this as pretense. Mm-hmm. And old Thomas Paine, this land meandered, hoisting up the colors of the bourgeois standard. Yeah. See what here, I did there? Here. Standard. Huh? All right. See, right. see that flag? Oh. Standard. Standard. Yeah. Song. Song. Oh, oh. standard. And the song is sung at their expense. We'll vote them out in our defense until we get the ones with common sense to lead the folks with common sense. That's the world true. right now don't make no sense. It sure don't. Well, about to explode. The center. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Filled with TNT. <laughs> look, look, I only sing. That's it. It's funny. Uh, but I'm not a complainer, and I despise complainers, and I say so. I, you know, I don't listen to those words I just made up there. Mm-hmm. And if I heard them from somebody else, I'd say to him, well, then you step in there. You think you can do better. And I don't think I can. But I guess complaining, if you don't feel you have any power to change anything, feels like the most effective tool in the shed. So You've you know, got I'm, a point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I voted for Roosevelt. Don't get me wrong, but that doesn't mean I don't get to complain, does it, for goodness but sake? Sure don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, these CCC boys here, they took out a stand of trees from the ground just to plant the trees that they had on their trucks so they could go out there and get some beer. 
Is that true? That's good. Reason. I saw it with my own ears. <laughs> if that if that don't make a follower of the bourgeois standard angry, I don't know what. Anyways, yeah. I only dissent when I'm making up songs, what not fiddling. That's all. Yeah. That's what okay. standard bourgeois do. Yeah, it's art. Yes. <laughs> it is. Yes. That's my art form there. <laughs> so. Or so you think, anyway. <laughs> so I'm bourgeois now, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's official. Aren't we all? <laughs> Drink? Drink. Okay. <laughs> Maybe there is a use for this thing. It does give me thinking that if folks ever do listen to these wires, they might see I've been fibbing in my column. Only if you admit it. Well, the thing is, I don't even know I'm doing it until I go back and listen to what actually happened. I tell you, it makes you think how much our imagination immediately begins filling in for the facts. Well, maybe it'll keep you honest. It'll keep me boring is what I'm afraid of. Did I play for you that little girl in Kalispell? No. Well, this is what I mean. I, I, I like what we were talking about, what she said, but... What if I want to write about something not on the wire? Well, write whatever you want. Nobody's going to hear this anyway. Yeah, Lee Miller will hear it. Then it'll give him an excuse to get in there and start rewriting my stuff. Oh, that just gets my goat. Who does he think he is anyway? Really? You'd be the damn editor of that rag if you wanted it. I should, right? Mm-hmm. No, he's not that bad. He is that bad. And if your stuff needs anything, you give it to me first or I will quit. You will? Just watch me. And if I have to fight that pimple-nosed pinch fist, I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go get a drink. And let me play this wire, the one with the little red-headed I'm girl first. Well, you just said if my writing needs anything to give it to you first. Right, all right. <sighs> That's what we're doing. Go ahead. So what are we thinking right about here? Memory. Memory itself. I'm not sure it's as accurate as I think it is. And what do you remember about it? I remember a little girl, about 10 years old, sitting with her baby brother in the shade, watching her grandmother washing clothes in Flathead Lake. And there was nothing that girl couldn't see. Fish. Okay. Hey. Frankie, you come over here with me. Yeah, come on. Fish. Let's leave her alone. Come over this way. Come on, Frankie. Here, I'll give you a... Let's walk this way. Oh, Oh, watch your step. You come over here and help me wash. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Is that your wife? Oh, that woman over there? Yeah. Yeah, that's my wife. Is she drunk? Yes. Whoa! Ernie! I'm glad we came here. Whoa! What does she want? What does she want? Yes. Well, you're an insightful little human, aren't you? What are you doing out here? Well, (laughs) now, what is your name? Judy, this is Frankie. Ah, Judy, I'm Ernie. Hello, Frankie. He says hi. Uh, Oh, well, does he now? (laughs) Okay, Judy, I'm a newspaper writer. They call me a columnist. I write six stories a week for the Scripps Howard chain of newspapers. I've never met one of you before. Is that why you're here? I am always looking for my next story. Hey, Ernie! Ern! Little girl! Come here! Why are you ignoring her? Ignore, ignoring who? Your wife. Oh, well, you're right full of questions, aren't you? So what? Woo! I got something for you. Well, when you get married, you might understand. I've never seen anyone drunk in daylight. Well, you ought to try it there. You're funny. I got something <laughs> for you to drink. You know I'm kidding, right? Yes. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! I'm stepping on the rocks! Do you think she's gonna fall into the lake? Oh, I hope so. Oh, you do not. (laughs) No, I don't. Do you like her? My wife? Do I like her? Why are you repeating everything I say? It's just, I need a little air here. Do I like her? Do you? (laughs) Well, yeah. I love her. Why? Why? Okay, look, I'm the one with the newspaper column. Let me ask the questions. When I grow up, I'm not going to let anybody tell me what to do. Oh, yeah? I'll be the one doing the telling. I'm not living anybody else's life but my own. Well, shoot her. 
And I sure as heck won't let anything get in my way. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Here, I fell in the lake. My wife? Oh, boy. He sure was cute. <laughs> you wanted me to hear that, didn't you? Why not? It doesn't have anything to do with your memory. It's just You just want to laugh at me. No, I don't. You do. I, no, I want you to laugh at me. Go ahead, write you. your story. I'm just going to tell everybody you pushed me in. What? <laughs> they can hear for themselves that isn't true. True? <laughs> what does that mean? I'll tell them you pushed me in with a long stick or something. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> See? Maybe everything you hear isn't what you hear. That's what I mean. Better make sure your notes are backing up the lies this machine is telling. <sighs> Guess we'll have to let it lie. Uh -huh. I am opposed to note taking in all its forms. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Well, let's see about that. Um, where did we just come from? You think I don't know? No, I know you don't know. Well, we just came uh, from mm -hmm. South Dakota last night. <laughs> you don't remember Minnesota already. Oh, Minnesota, big deal. <laughs> Where are we now? Some town with a lake in it. It's northeast Iowa. Let me look. <laughs> oh, what's that? What's that in your hand? My notebook. Oh, so you do take notes. You know I do. I have to get folks' names, right? Names and places. <laughs> this is uh, Spirit Lake, Iowa. Yep. And shame on you. First Whoa. you pushed me in with a big stick, and now you're lying to these people. <laughs> what people? <laughs> Whoever's listening to us. Where are we headed, anyway? I, t I already told you we're going home. Where's that? Dana, Indiana. Liar! You, you... <laughs> I knew it. We agreed we were going home. Uh, Dana is home to some people. Don't play this game with me, Ern. Uh, well, it is. I knew it when you didn't want to go through Chicago. I knew you were going to steer us to your folks. It'll only be for a few days, then we can go home. You haven't forgotten where that is? Well, let me check my notes. How do I know you haven't bought us a house somewhere and forgot to tell me about it? Well, that's a good idea. <sighs> All right, just a few days in Dana with your folks and then straight home to Washington. For real. <laughs> well, if I don't forget... I need to write. Later that night... You want to hear this? Go ahead. Travel, they say, is educational. And so we have found it in our first years of constant wandering. Why, if I had been sitting at a desk instead of busting around, I never would have learned that Pocahontas was buried in England, or that most laundries insist on putting starch in white pants. And I'm sure I never would have gotten into my head where Patagonia is. Neither would I have known where the Red River is, but I now know of so many Red Rivers that I don't know which one the song was written about. And if I had been behind a desk, I never would have ridden with a long unseen cousin dragging redwood logs out of the California mountains with a caterpillar. There is one thing, however, that travel has not taught me. What makes a noise come out of a radio? We have traveled by practically all forms of locomotion, including piggyback. We've been at least three times into every state of the Union. We have not spent a Christmas in a home in four years. I spent one Fourth of July in hip boots, sheepskin coat, mittens, and a stocking cap. And we've celebrated New Year's three times in shirt sleeves. <laughs> Travel is so confusing. Speaking of confusion, my most confused moment was at the airport in Mexico City. The ladies and men's retiring rooms there were labeled Senoras and Senoras. Now that's an awful lot alike. So I walked smack into the ladies' room. No harm done, however, and I walked right out again. Then I took my bearings, consulted my Spanish dictionary, lit a cigarette for nonchalance, and this time walked confidently and correctly into the men's department. And I'll be damned if there weren't two old ladies in there. Americans, too. Farthest I've driven in one day is 570 miles from a ranch in the center of 
Arizona, clearing to Los Angeles. I'll never do that again. A fella gets awfully sleepy driving, especially right after lunch on a hot day. Several times I've had to stop and walk up and down the road to wake up once we stopped on the desert for me to take a little nap. I have never heard such intense quiet. That girl who rides with me was reading a newspaper. This sounds incredible, but the slight rustling of her paper made so much noise in the desert stillness that I couldn't go to sleep. Sleepy as I was. I never said anything to her about it. The question most frequently asked of us is, aren't you getting awfully sick of traveling by now? The answer is an honest no, though it is impossible. Some of these days we might come to hate the impermanency of travel. I've tried to figure out myself why we haven't tired of it. And my conclusion is that our travel is a means of escape. We don't have to stay and face anything out. If we don't like a place, we can move on. If something happens that isn't pleasant, we can leave. Settle it later by letter or just let it go forever. Stability cloaks you with a thousand little personal responsibilities and we've been able to flee from them. But just as important with us, I suspect, is the fact we can't stay long even in the places we love. There's no opportunity for lingering disillusionment. I remember that once, years ago, we loved Arizona so much that when we crossed the Colorado River for the last time, we could hardly talk for the lumps in our throats. We left Hawaii with broken hearts. We can hardly speak of the people in Sun Valley, Idaho without bubbling over. We hardly dare go to Albuquerque, we hate so to leave. We still love all those places because we always had to leave before the sweet taste could turn to vinegar. And also before they could find out about us and kick us out. Next time on the Ernie Pyle Experiment. I don't know whether you know that long, sad wind that blows so steadily across the thousands of miles of Midwest flatlands in the summertime. If you don't, it'll be hard for you to understand the feeling I have about it. Get All your folks sleep, have been so talking to everyone that'll oh, listen that you're on your way home. What are you doing out here making all this noise for? Mom! Shh! She's sleeping! Well, she shouldn't be sleeping out in the yard in the first place! She's in the car! Kids these days! Old age is just a capricious notion anyway, isn't it? What is that word? Huh? Capricious? Yes, capricious. A swift, abrupt, unmotivated, unpredictable condition. Change, transformation. And I'm right about that. Don't make me look it up. I think this wind has a touch of caprice, don't you? See you next week, folks. Until then, I'm Dan V. Prescott, reminding you that the good road will never end if you can only stay on it. The Ernie Pyle Experiment is produced at WFIU on the campus of Indiana University. For complete credits of cast and crew for each episode, visit WFIU.org slash Ernie Pyle Podcast. Also, find the Ernie Pyle Experiment wherever you access your media. WFIU, Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Carrie on and on. Uh, I, I mean, I'm Carrie on and on. Damn it. Um, I'm Carrie O'Nanon. Mm. <laughs>